Mr. Smith became director recently, but he immediately decided to change the office's charter. First, he revised the salary fund, bypassing his rate. Being a miser, he reduced the salary of almost all the staff. Many people almost the same day wrote a letter of resignation. Those who remained wanted to escape from there and continued to endure the antics of the new director only due to circumstances. The biggest problem was finding cleaners. No one wanted to go wash the floors and rub the door handles to a shine all day for a meager salary. It was the mania of the new boss. Mrs. Harris, deputy personnel officer, urged the director to add some money to the cleaner lady's salary almost every day. After all, they will never find employees for such a salary. But every morning at the meeting, Mr. Smith only said angrily that the office was already full of dirt and dust. He almost yelled at Mrs. Harris, If you don't find a cleaning lady soon, I'll make cleaning up your job. The woman herself was ready to run anywhere from this monster of savings, but she perfectly understood that it was not so easy to find a job at her age. So every time, she silently listened to his unreasonable reproaches and demands. At the next morning meeting, he once again expressed his dissatisfaction with the work of his deputy because the cleaners were never found. Mr. Smith said angrily as he approached the window, Is it really that hard for you to find a cleaner lady? After all, there are a lot of people who want to work in a stable company. At some point, he silently froze and began to look at something in the distance. A very sparsely dressed woman was neatly stacking cardboard boxes by the trash cans. He said, smiling slyly and turning towards his deputy, Are you saying that no one is coming to you? Ads and advertisements are not helping you? See how it's supposed to be done. He opened the window wide and leaned half a length out of it. Mr. Smith called out, Hey, poor thing, come to my place for a minute. Maybe I can help you. But the girl didn't stop her work even for a second and continued to fold the cardboard. The boss was surprised, but was not going to back down. There was even some excitement in his eyes. He turned to Mrs. Harris, winked at her, and called the guard. He said to the guy in the uniform as soon as he appeared, Bring this miserable woman here, no matter what it costs you. When the girl entered the office, he realized that she was completely deaf. She had a hearing aid, but apparently it was not quite serviceable or from very cheap options. The beggar girl was about 30 years old. Surprisingly, she turned out to be a very neat girl. Her hands were clean, as were her clothes and hair. The lack of makeup made her face look younger. Her hair was neatly combed and tied into a bun. Her clothes are old but clean. True, it was not an age in size, but at least without the smell inherent in homeless people. The director apparently remembered that the deaf can read lips, so he began to explain very slowly, pronouncing each sound. Do you want to get paid? You will clean the office. The girl stood silently for a couple of minutes, looking at the office and those present. She then silently nodded in agreement. This gesture seemed to lift the director to the Olympus of victory. He turned proudly to Mrs. Harris, who was quietly watching what was happening. Is it impossible to find a cleaning lady? Maybe you have forgotten how to select staff. Here's a lesson for you. This beggar girl would agree for less pay. By the way, until I told her her salary, think I can reduce it? But when he saw the insane look of his deputy, he apparently realized that even this cleaning lady would run away for even less money, and he didn't continue to promote this topic. Molly, that was the name of the deaf girl, became sometimes going to the office long before the start of the working day. She diligently washed, cleaned, and wiped everything that caught her eye. In a week, she made the office unrecognizable. Everything shone with cleanliness and sterility. But this didn't help to win the team over to her. Literally every second employee tried behind her back to express some kind of mockery at the deaf poor girl, developing the topic to insane laughter in the office. Everyone understood that behind her back, they could say whatever they wanted. A girl's hearing aid was cheap and old. Nevertheless, she sometimes heard some jokes addressed to her, but there were so many difficult moments in her life that she could well close her eyes to an offensive word. Each time, she thought only that the sound would soon end, and she would leave for her quiet little world where no one would offend her for sure. After work, she hurried to the outskirts of the city, where there was an old abandoned house, but with a roof. She lived there lately, but not alone. Every time Molly saw an unfortunate cat or dog, she couldn't get past them, and she took them all to her little home. Three different kitties, one cat and two dogs were always waiting for her return. She was ready to listen to ridicule in the office just for the sake of her pets. After all, 
Now, her household could sometimes feast on some kind of poor or inexpensive sausages, in addition to bread and cheap milk. Molly could drink water herself with a piece of bread in the evening, but she spent the money received after hard-working days on something tasty for her pets. After all, it was their loving glances that could quickly brighten up a hard-working day. Mrs. Harris was pleased with the executive and clean cleaning lady. The office literally shone with cleanliness. This, despite the fact that the employees continued to make fun of the unfortunate girl behind her back. But the most surprising thing was that the director again turned out to be dissatisfied. It turns out that the beggar girl didn't justify his hopes. True, he couldn't even explain to himself what he expected from her. But every day, a silent girl with very intelligent eyes began to win the favor of her colleagues. Even those who recently made fun of her realized that Molly didn't always wander through the garbage dumps. Her speech was laconic, but very competent. She could sometimes say such phrases that made even people with education think. Sometimes they got the impression that she understands a lot, but doesn't show it. At this time, the affairs of the office, and in particular the director, went downhill. Mr. Smith chastised everyone every morning, as if looking for someone to blame for his failure as an economist. The performance of the branch began to fall catastrophically. The embittered director fired people by several people almost every day. Employees talked behind his back that he would soon be alone in his entire office. The company owner increasingly began to visit them with checks. He didn't like that this branch had gone to the very last step in a short time. But every time before the arrival of the company owner, Mr. Smith literally intimidated employees with all sorts of hardships. His goal was to create the perfect picture. However, the company owner at the age of 35 achieved everything himself and was not going to lose a developed business. He saw that in this office, some kind of heavy atmosphere literally hung in the air. When he arrived there again, the owner stated that sanitization was being carried out in all branches of the company, and all employees were entitled to a paid day off. While all the employees, including the director, were resting, the office was in full swing. Video cameras were installed in each room and connected to the owner's computer. Of course, only he and the video surveillance company knew about this. Mr. Jones really wanted to know what was really going on in this office. Therefore, he went to such a cunning move to figure it out and save this branch of the company. Every day from morning until the closing of the branch, he began to monitor what was happening at the facility. Slowly, he collected fact after fact, pointing to the reasons for leaving the last positions of the once successful branch. One day, Mr. Jones was very surprised when, during one of his meetings, he saw an amazingly well-written business development plan. He skimmed through the material and looked up in surprise at Mr. Smith. Who did it? Mr. Smith realized that the owner was interested in the material, so he modestly lowered his eyes and said, I tried very hard. I didn't sleep for several nights, and I was sure that you would like it. The first thing that confused the owner was the clearly feminine, neat handwriting. He had already read the explanatory notes of the failed director several times and knew his clumsy handwriting well. In addition, in the intervening time, he was able to learn that the mind of this man was as torturous as his handwriting. Mr. Jones decided to watch the video recordings. He wanted to see who made this plan. The owner was very surprised when he noticed how the cleaning lady worked on these materials almost until the morning. At the same time, she was immersed in her work. Either she thought for a few minutes, or she quickly began to write. It was evident that she didn't even keep track of time. At the same time, the girl drew graphs so easily and quickly, as if she had been doing this all her life. The next morning, Mr. Smith was called into the company owner's office and stood like a boy, his eyes on the floor. The business owner was angry. In the office, everyone was sitting, afraid to move and get under a hot hand. Do you understand that you almost destroyed my branch with your lies and fraud? In addition, I am shocked how many employees I have lost because of your rudeness. You fired all the best people. But when you tried to appropriate other people's work, I couldn't stand aside. I hope you have 10 minutes to pack your things and leave the walls of my firm once and for all. The former director immediately headed towards the exit, hunched over and turning pale but he still managed to hear how Mr. Jones asked the female secretary to invite a deaf girl who cleans the office. When Molly timidly entered his office, he gestured to the chair in front of him. Sit down. I want to know your true face, because you are very smart and have not lived like this all your life. The girl, a little bewildered, made it clear that this was true. Being deaf, but not dumb, she began to talk in a low voice, staring somewhere out the window. 
Molly was born into a very poor family, but from childhood, she loved to learn everything new. She diligently did her homework herself, when her parents in the next room drank alcohol and arranged drunken showdowns. From the third grade, she found a secluded corner in an abandoned house not far from their apartment. Until graduation, she did all her homework there when her parents were drunk. In the morning, she quietly ran home to get clothes and a briefcase while her parents were sleeping and ran to school. Despite such conditions, Molly was able to graduate with honors and without any problems entered the College of Economics. All teachers loved this smart and purposeful student. She was ready to help her fellow students at any moment. No one had any doubts that Molly would receive an honors degree, and it happened. Economics was her favorite subject and became her lifelong dream. There she met her first love. Kevin was a year older. When they saw each other in the corridor of the university, they knew at first sight that they fell in love with each other. The guy was from a very wealthy family and rich parents were categorically against a smart but impoverished daughter-in-law. The feelings of young people were so strong that Kevin proposed to the girl, saying that he wanted to be with her all his life. Soon they went to visit friends outside the city. The mood was great, especially since they were supposed to get married in a week. They had to go a little to the country house, where everyone was already waiting for them, but suddenly a very thick fog descended. Visibility was very poor. They didn't even understand at what point the headlights of an oncoming car shone directly into the windshield. A terrible screech of brakes and emptiness. When she regained consciousness, she was in the ambulance. Molly immediately began to ask how her groom Kevin was feeling. She fainted upon hearing that he was no more. When she woke up in her hospital room, she immediately knew that something had changed in her life. From that moment, she stopped hearing. Doctors couldn't explain the reason for such sudden deafness and blamed everything on stress. She begged the doctors to let her go to the funeral of her lover despite hearing loss and a difficult mental state. But she was not allowed to approach the grave of her beloved. Kevin's parents blamed her for everything and said that if weren't for her and her poor friends, he would not have gone to that country house. His mother literally hissed, almost throwing her fist at her. I'll make your life hell. At best, you can only get a job as a janitor, not an economist. You will cry, regretting that you killed my son. The poor girl regretted at that moment that she didn't die instead of Kevin, because no one needs her anyway. Her mother changed roommates like gloves, and soon she burned down their house in this way. In her life, there was no work, housing, loved one, and hearing. It was impossible to earn money somewhere, since no one hired a deaf and fragile beggar girl. At first, she began to learn to read lips. After a while, she was able to earn some money by cleaning at the local market and by a cheap hearing aid. Of course, it didn't make the world the same, but some words can be caught. Since then, she has been a wanderer. She found a small house in which she began to live. At the same time, she didn't seem to complain about life. It seemed that everything is fine with her. Her beloved pets were nearby, and they are the most grateful close creatures for her. Molly added that when the cold comes, her friends freeze because the abandoned house is not heated. Even at that moment, she was not talking about herself, but about her pets. At the end of the story, Mr. Jones remembered that terrible accident. He was familiar with Kevin, and then he was very shocked by what happened. On the same day, he appointed Molly with the background in economics as the executor director of this branch, and he didn't regret it. The business of the branch quickly went up the hill. Soon, the owner began to come to the office frequently to pick up Molly from work. A few months later, the news of the marriage of this beautiful couple was no secret to anyone. The best gift for Molly was a document stating that she is now the shelter owner in which all of her pets were placed after she moved in with her husband. In the near future, she will definitely not have time to look after them at home. She happily prepared to become the mother of a baby. The doctor said that it would be a boy, and Mr. Jones's joy literally overwhelmed him. In addition, either an overabundance of joyful emotions or some hormonal changes unexpectedly returned Molly's hearing, and she became a completely full-fledged person. The big spacious house of the businessman was now filled with the smells of homemade food, an atmosphere of love and peace.